those two type of nurses should not even be talking to each other because they are <laughs> Today, I've got Priscilla all the way from the US. If you've not seen her, if you've not seen her video, in fact, after this video, you will have to, you want to subscribe to her because she's got so many information. I will leave her to introduce herself and I hope you enjoy this video. So can we meet you, please? As you already heard from Gloria, my name is Priscilla Kuma. I come from Ghana. What you don't know is that I grew up in Nigeria. I spent about over 10 years of my life in your state. Yes, I speak Yoruba. Uh -huh, Gloria is surprised. I see the fish. Really? <laughs> yes. So I grew up in your state and then I moved back to Ghana. And from Ghana, we moved to USA. I came to USA to join my spouse and I live in New York State. I'm a registered nurse. I have about 12 years nursing experience, believe it or not. And I love nursing. I came to the US, I struggled to find a way to be able to become a nurse again in America. It took me about two years to do that. And then whilst waiting for all that paperwork, I was working as a CNA registered um, certified nurse assistant. Mm -hmm. And after two years, I became an RN. I was so happy and everything. And I got an RN job. And in that time, I've been helping a lot of people and that informed my decision to form a consult where I assist nurses who want to work in USA. So basically that is me, nurse, YouTuber, wife, neighbor, sister, <laughs> anything at all, that's me. Just like wow. Yeah, I know you're a consultant. You own a consult because I've seen your video. I've seen a few of your videos, but our, our viewers do not know. So do you mean if, nurses want to come to the u.s they can contact you and you able to help them with the process that is interesting so you have like your own organization that you help people through all the process yeah so the usa process is very cumbersome it's not like the uk or any other place and you need guidance the processes are different just because every state is just like a country on its own so what new york does is different from what california would do and because we did not school here, we are foreign educated nurses. The process is more cumbersome for us. You need to know the right states to choose. You need to know that uh, some states don't require English tests. Some states don't require social security number. And if you don't know and you go and choose those states, that's require those things, you get stuck. So basically we deal with general nurses, midwives and psychiatry nurses who want to work in USA. We do not offer any opportunity for nursing assistance because that is it a gray area we don't even want to venture into. Yeah, so that's basically what the consult is about. It's called US RM Pathway Consult, yeah. UPC for short. <laughs> so I'll be putting the link or the email how we can contact you. Really a very, very good opportunity. And before we go further, please, because for me, I used to say, if they ask you for money, run. Do we have to pay you to for you to help us? Let's just say us now. <laughs> For us to come to the US, do we have to pay you? Are we paying for consultation or do we just pay for the you know the normal processing registration alone? Or are we paying you as a consultant to come to the US? Okay, thank you very much. That's a very good question I need to address because there are scammers out there, there are people who are misrepresent misrepresenting me. So let me clear that. So we we have a service charge, basically our workmanship, what we take to do the paperwork for you. That is our service charge. And as of today, we are doing this video, it's $300. That is all you pay to us. And you don't pay any other fee to us. But if we are doing your credential evaluation and CGFNS says it's $420, you are paying the money directly from your packet to CGFNS. We just show you that this is where you have to click on on their website. Go there and do that yourself. So our process is basically self-sponsorship. If you want to fund your own process to be able to write NCLEX, that is when you come to us. We don't support anybody. We don't provide financial aid or anything when you want to pay for your own process. So you pay us $300 to do the paperwork for you. But when you are doing evaluation or when you go to your school in your home country or in the nursing council of your country and they want to charge 500 pounds, that is between you and your nursing council, you pay that to them and all. So our workmanship is just $300. But starting January 2023, prices are likely to go up. The currencies, you know, so... That is exactly what we take. And you don't pay that to any individual. We have a website, www.usrnpathwayconsult.com. You register on that website and you pay on that website. Nobody should send your personal bank account or anything. The only means, if you're not paying on the website, which is very rare, 
you are paying via an app called Cash App, and you would have communicated with me first before you even get to that stage because I will release the code to you before you can even pay. Yes, so that's just about the payment aspect. The process is long, it's uh, capital intensive. It can cost you about $3,000 from the day you start to do your evaluation, going to your nursing council, going to CGFNS and nursing tuition and everything. It can cost you about $3,000. And that's a lot of money in Naira. It's a lot of money in city. But people are determined if you, if you want something, you work towards it. The good thing is that you don't pay all at a go. You do evaluation, you pause. If you go to your school and they say they are charging 3000 or 30000 Naira, you don't have it. You go back home until you have it, then you go back. So it's in stages by stage. And um, it's going well so far. So many people have done self-sponsorship and it has a lot of advantage. You have a, a right to direct higher job. The recruiters will be rushing you because you have a license and you will tell them how much they should pay you. But if you go to an agency, you don't have a bargaining power. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. So do like if we are going to let's say go through your agency, do we do we have the option of choosing any state in the US we want or are there specific states that you like work for or work with? Okay. So we as consultants have all the states. We know what the states require. There are some states that when you choose them, you choose to use them, your process will delay. New York State where I live they are process delays even though their requirements favor a foreigner to get your report and everything att authorization to test it takes a while but there are some other states that are very fast kentucky like this is very fast so we will tell you kentucky wants this and this and this but they are fast new york wants this and this and this but they take long these are the pros and cons we leave the option to you and you decide so we just guide you we don't make the decision for you but some states are no go area at all. New Mexico, you need to have a house address. I will tell you, and if you insist that you can produce a house address, so be it. So my job is to just consult with you, give you the guidance, and you make your final decision. Wow. Thank you. That is really good. That is very helpful. Before we go into quickly the process of migrating as a nurse from Africa, from wherever outside of the U.S. to the U.S., can you just tell us, like, you know, because you've worked with so many nurses, how long do you think this process will take? Because let's say for the UK now, something as quick as three to six months, you can be in the UK already with all the process done and everything, even if you're doing it by yourself. So what is the rough estimate? How long do you think this may last? So I always tell clients that rather give yourself a wider time frame so that you don't get frustrated or broken hearted. So ideally on paper, 18 months to 36 months, a year and a half to three years. Give yourself three years and forget about it. When it happens for you in 18 months, lucky you. But when you give yourself 18 months and it's taking three years, you'll be very depressed and frustrated. So between 18 months to 36 months. But the good thing is recruiters now, America has shortage. America is desperately, desperately looking for nurses. So they are doing premium processing at the immigration level to expedite your paperwork a little bit. So give yourself 18 to 36 months. It can happen earlier than that. Oh, that's that's not too bad. Like if you keep working where you are and just put your mind that you one day you go to the US, but mm -hmm. don't resign your job, keep doing whatever you're doing and start your process. The same with Canada, the same with any country. Do your, continue what you're doing, keep getting the money and then keep doing your process alongside thank you for that uh, can you please just briefly quickly tell us if you can remember the stages that one needs to go it may not be accordingly but you know the important steps please okay so as you already know america <laughs> their processes are long everybody's trying to, almost everybody is trying to enter america so everything is very like Legit, you have to go through the processes. You cannot jump any stage. So basically, for somebody who did not school in the US, the first thing you want to do is evaluate your credentials. You want them to tell you that your education, wherever you have them, matches the American standard. That is the first step. Credential evaluation is the first step. And there are so many companies that have been assigned that role. They do that credential evaluation. Okay. Okay. Yes. But... You need to know which one to go to. If you're a nurse, you need to know which credential evaluation you are going to. If you're a doctor, you need to know which one you're going to. If you're a teacher, you need to know which one you're going to. And also at the state level, the state board of nursing, every state has their own board of nursing. Unlike how we all have maybe one 
nursing council in Ghana or one NMC UK or NMC Abuja. No, every state has their own NMC sort of state board of nursing. And that state board of nursing will have to tell you which credential evaluator you should go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first step is credential evaluation. Let's say there are five companies, for example, and one of them is CGFNS that everybody has heard of. If you're a nurse going to America, you hear of CGFNS. They are long, they are lengthy. I always discourage people to run away from them. They are better ones you can use, actually. Okay. That is something you'll find when you come to my console to show you the loopholes. So then one is CGFNS, and then you go to the state board and register with the state board. And so you register with the state board, they don't know you. So when you go to the state board website, you want to read the requirements for an international nurse or foreign educated nurse, because that's what you are. You did not school in the USA. So in reading about the requirements for a foreign educated nurse, they are going to mention that use this particular evaluator. If they don't mention it and you go and use them, they can't receive their report. Wow. One popular one is West, W-E-S. Yes, yes. If New York State does not tell you to use West, don't use West. New York State does not accept West. So if you go and do your own evaluation and you're thinking they will get the reports, they will reject it. The State Board of Nursing must tell you use one, two, three, four. Then you will now go to that evaluator's website again. And now read the requirements there for a foreign educated nurse on that evaluator's website. So if New York State says use CGFNS, you now go to CGFNS website and read about what you need for somebody who did not school here. Mm -hmm. Then most, all of them, actually, all the evaluators will need two things from you, for sure. One, they will need your nursing school wherever you schooled, back home in your country. They'll need them to validate some documents and produce your clinical hours and your theory hours when you were in nursing school. Yeah. All of them will ask to see whether you actually went to the school. So you now go back to your school and get those documents. Also, they will need the nursing council of your country, <clears throat> NMC UK, NMC Ghana, NMC Abuja, to produce a document showing that truly you are a, professional, a professionally trained nurse. All the evaluators, no matter who they are, would need those two documents from your nursing school and from your nursing body. Yes. And it's in acquiring those documents that it takes so long for our fellow Africans because you know how we operate. You go to your school, your tutor has gone to market. He's gone to funeral. <laughs> the, head, the dean is not there. The headmaster, headmistress is not there. They don't tell you when. They don't reply emails. When your school finally sends the document to CGFNS and there's a portion missing, CGFNS is not going to call your school on phone. They're going to email them. My personal form was missing a signature. They emailed my school that they are not getting a signature. I was waiting here three, four months. I did not know. Then I, I called CGFNS. To call CGFNS, you're going to wait online for at least two hours. If you're making an international call, just be ready. Go and buy a lot of credit to make a phone call. Don't call CGFNS. There's a way to contact them on their website. Then they said, oh, my school didn't um, reply the mail. I said, what mail? They said there's a signature portion that was missing. I had to now tell someone to follow up. So you know how things work back home. I can't go, in, you know, <laughs> can't go into details about that mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do the evaluation. Your school and your NMC sends the information to the evaluator. Then they also take time to do a thorough research and now generate a report. By this time, you have registered with the board. You have registered with New York states of nursing the board of nursing there so when the report comes from cgfns they're going to send it to new york and so you register with the new york board of nursing your reports will be sitting there in new york board of nursing office and they, they don't know you so they won't upload it and use it for anything okay. but whilst registering with the evaluator you choose a state so they will send it to the state but the state does not know you because you don't have an online account so they'll just put the report there until you come and register so let's say you've done all that, and they will also look through the report and make sure everything is okay. There are instances where the evaluator said your education does not match American standard, but the board, the state board, gave you the power to write anklets. I know two people who had a negative report from the state board, CGFNS, from CGFNS, but the state, Virginia state, allowed them to write the anklets. So the states, that, made, that makes 
me know that the state also does a little bit of digging, looking into your documents again. They don't just take the report and act upon it. They can also look further. Yes. So then they will now give you the go ahead and give you something called ATT, okay. authorization to test. We cannot write NCLEX. This whole story I'm telling you is just to write NCLEX. If you are wondering what NCLEX is, NCLEX is just a USA nurse's licensure for you to be able to practice in US. You cannot practice nursing here without writing that NCLEX. Mm -hmm. NCLEX is not the same as IELTS. IELTS is an English proficiency test. I get questions like, can I write IELTS instead of NCLEX? No, they are not replaceable. They are two different ball games. Yes. So with the ATT, you now go to another website called Piercing VUE. Piercing they are the organization for all these exams. If doctors want to write USMLE, it's Piercing. If, so they organize examinations. So you go to their website and also register and also pay and also pay. Their prices have been the same for a long time, $200 if you're writing on US land. If okay. you're writing outside US, I think you pay an additional 150 international fee. So 350 for foreigners who, who are writing outside the US. And there comes South Africa. Unfortunately, on the whole of African continent, the only place you can write and collect is in South Africa, Johannesburg. And this brings a lot of costs when you're doing self-sponsorship. It will not cost you less than $1,000 to go to South Africa, get a hotel, book food, whatever, and come back home. For some time, my fellow Nigerians have been having challenge, challenges in getting a South African visa. So most of them have been going to Philippines, a longer journey and a huge cost. Even UK, a longer journey and a huge cost. So there are petitions out there that say, sign this petition for us to have a center in West Africa, be it Ghana, be it Nigeria. So if you see that petition and you're watching this, kindly sign it. We deserve a center in our region, West Africa. Yeah, so then you go right, you get an ATT, you register with Pearson, you go right NCLEX wherever you can write this in London, Philippines, South Africa, on American land. If you people ask, I have a visa, I visit America. Yes, you can use a visitor's visa, come visit and write it. Okay. Yes. Then in 48 hours, the results comes out online. Then you are a US RN. Hmm. And then, yes, this story I'm telling you can take you about 18 months. Just this process alone. Mm -hmm. Then comes immigration. You now have to find a job. Okay. The recruiters are there looking for endless passes. So you say I've passed endless, you apply to all of them. Then they start working with you, file your I-140, and your documents will now pass through the MVC stages and stages until they finally bring you. Many ask questions. Um, my country, we don't get, they don't get visa to nurse. Uh, there's a visa backlog, blah, blah, blah. Just know that the healthcare sector, your visa processing is a different part. It's different from those immigrants, non-immigrant visa, no. They are handling yours on a special level. It's called EB3, Employment Based Visa Section. Okay. So American need nurses, you have passed in class. Don't worry about backlog. You get an interview date and you go. So when your recruiter is doing premium processing, it moves faster for you. So that's basically how to become a nurse in America. It's so strange. Wow. <laughs> it sounds it sounds cumbersome, but it's doable. It's doable. I've done it. <laughs> it's doable. Especially if you've got someone like you who would put who will help you through the process. And determination, research, and videos like this, it's it's doable. Wow. And then you just uh, get the job, go to the US, and that's you. You get your inductions, no more exams when you go in. No, no more exam. Oh, that's but you feel you'll be trained on the job at least three months. They'll train you, but you'll be paid. You'll be going to work, having a patient assignment, but you'll be with the preceptor for about three months. I shared the preceptor experience on my YouTube channel, what you should oh. expect, and yeah, how it goes. Yeah. Wow. Now that you mentioned pay, this is the most important Sunday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the reason why I can then decide to start my US process tomorrow. <laughs> I've got this prejudice for U.S. nurses. In fact, I've made a TikTok video recently about it. I was saying that U.S. nurses, especially travel nurses, can employ a registered nurse from the U.K. and pay them salary conveniently from their own salary. Is it true? Because it's like you could do money ritual in that U.S. And like you nurses, you are like millionaires <laughs> and we are just wondering if we are the same nurses on this earth. Mm -hmm. How is the salary? for okay. everybody like what's the range <laughs> okay so talking about salary 
as usual, I shared a video about salary. So basically, you are either a staff nurse sitting at one hospital, wake up Monday, Friday, you drive to that hospital, you're a staff nurse assigned to that hospital, work for that hospital, or you are a travel nurse. You move around. Those two type of nurses should not even be talking to each other because they are not <laughs> <laughs> they are not mates. They are not mates, and they can never be mates. Hmm. <laughs> You can't be mates. You cannot be mates. You can't even be talking to each other. You are not on the same level at all. You are not. You are. You are not a nurse. They are the nurses. So I know. <laughs> it's so sad. So <clears throat> thanks to COVID, um, COVID opened up eyes. There was a lot of shortage. You saw how people were dying in New York. How the morgue. The, there was a mobile morgue, and there were no place to put bodies anyway. Nurses rose up. People began bargaining for their pay and their worth. Many quit their jobs to do travel nursing where the money is. So we'll talk about travel nursing and then we'll come to my miserable salary because I'm a staff nurse. <laughs> so they were desperately looking for nurses. Anything they would offer. They will offer you a sign-up bonus if you take the assignment. Some of them can even offer you up to $20,000 to accept assignment. And asset assignment basically means a 12 to 13 weeks assignments going to one hospital somewhere it can be within your state or it can be outside your state anyway let me come back a little bit travel nursing there are two types there's local travel nursing where i can still sit in my house and go to a, a hospital around <laughs> me not too far away and there's travel nursing travel nursing where i pick my bag from new york and i go to california okay. i do 13 weeks there i get up i go to kentucky i do 12 weeks there, that is travel, travel nursing. The big money you see, they are going out of state or moving far away from their home. Okay. And the, the more miles you travel, the more stipends they give you for, for travel allowance. Mm -hmm. So some of them even actually give you accommodation. They give you things to entice you to get it. And this is good for a single person, young and free. When you have no kids, no wife, husband holding you down, you can pick your bag and go anywhere at all. Mm -hmm. And this is good for somebody who can quickly adjust to an unknown, an unknown environment. Wow, Not yeah, everybody yeah. can do that. Yeah. Yes. It's very hard to just get up and go to a hospital. You don't know anybody. Hmm. And they give you the worst assignment too. Yeah, definitely. The money. You're, you, are the making, money. you are making three or four times my money. So why should I be giving you easy assignments? Or why should I be helping you? <laughs> no. We fold our hands and we watch you suffer. Myself too. We watch you suffer because you are going home with four times my pay mm -hmm. and why should i be helping you and i'm never going to see you again in my life 12 weeks maybe never yeah so basically mm -hmm. there's local travel and there's travel travel the big big money you see is travel travel out of state you're going far away you can't even be in your own state but you're driving like eight hours from your house and living in some airbnb hotel something like that and then the staff nurse, what I am, sitting at one place, going to my job and very miserable sometimes. So after the COVID issue, there was market adjustment. So those who were hired during COVID or after COVID as new graduates, new grad, America would say new grad, fresh from school, they even earn more than we those who were already on the job pre-COVID. Oh. They quickly did a market adjustment. So a new grad who finished school today Will be hired and will be taking more than me that I've been working for some time now. Mm. Yep. Because if you don't give that new grad what she wants, she's going to go and travel somewhere. They travel now, they don't even care. They need like two months experience, six months experience, one year experience, you are good to go. Yes. So I saw recently a lady on YouTube, new grad, six months on a job, she takes $45 an hour. Me, I'm RN2. There's, the levels are in one, are in two, like how you can. I know are in two. I've seen the video. Yeah. How you have bands, we have numbers, are in one, are in two, are in three. I am are in two. As I said, I have, I have about 12 years experience as a nurse. And I'm taking between 34.5 to 35.5 dollars an hour. And this new grad, six months on the job, is counting her money on YouTube. She takes 45. She lives in California. So a lot of factors affect your salary, of course where you are living, the state you are living yeah. and the cost of living of the, in that state. Yeah. I'm in New York. If I was living in New York City, I wouldn't be making 34.5 or whatever. I'll be making way more. There are new grass in New York State. They are making over $45 an hour. And they are in the New York City, the same state with me. 
But the way the tax system operates, the federal tax, that is American tax, and the state tax, New York tax, they all play a role in determining the market. So two nurses, same rank, hired on the same day, would not be earning the same money, and it's shocking. Mm -hmm. So you can't even compare your paycheck or pay slip with anybody because you are on different levels. Your money is just different. Okay. Yes. So if somebody comes now and gets hired, you should be looking at anything above $35 an hour. Okay. You can get that no matter where you are. So therefore, my fellow Africans, since most of them are viewers on this channel, most of them are coming through agencies like Avance, O'Grady Petting and stuff like that. The agency have their rate. If they are not giving you direct hire, they are bringing you and you are bonded to them for three years, two to three yes. years. Some even have five years. They have their own rate. Okay. And the rates are not good because they've invested in you, waited for you for two to three years to bring you over. So mm -hmm. they give you whatever they want. That is the disadvantage of going with an agency. Agents. Wow. If you close your eyes, loan money, save money, do whatever, do self-sponsorship, you would get direct hire job and then you will determine how much you are paid. And you are not bonded. So when you come to my hospital and the pay is not good, you can pick up your bag and go somewhere else. But an agency nurse cannot live until she has saved that 6,000 hours, that three years. The only way you can live or break off that contract is by paying them chunk of money. That ranges between $20,000 to $40,000. You pay them back to, to wow. cut off your contract. Wow. Somebody said, this sounds to me like it's modern day slavery. So I don't know. What can we do? <laughs> you, you you have the documents, you need a job, American need nurses. It's better than nothing. It's better than where yeah. we're working or where we come from. Yeah. So a travel nurse, I have a friend who earns one, 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 $111 an hour. She still lives in the same house. She still lives in the same neighborhood with me. She still drives like 50 minutes drive <laughs> to work. She's doing local travel and she was paid one, one, one. Then he came down to ninety nine. She's now at ninety five dollars an hour. When the COVID case, cases, COVID cases started going down, yes. So it depends on the agency you are signed up with. The travel, yes. Yeah, so the travel nurses have agencies you can sign up with, and they all have their packages. And this is within America. This is different from that advance and OGB going to Africa to find nurses. There are agencies that bring their package. We'll give you accommodation. We'll give you travel allowance. We'll buy four for you. We'll give you 20000 to sign up with us. So you will now look and pick whichever works for you. And I always advise my fellow Africans once more because that is what I am. And don't come to America and start doing travel nursing unless you have acquired two years experience, minimum. American nursing is very, very different. It is. I've had a chance to speak to African nurses, Asian nurses, and nurses from UK. American nurses, American nursing is extremely different. Yes. It and it takes a toll on your health too. Personally, I even got a back injury, so I had to get out of that environment. Mm -hmm. So you need to know your skills. As I said, we fold our hands and watch you suffer. You need to polish your nursing skills, know how nursing in America is, know your medical conditions, the know how to nurse. Hmm. The medication names are different from the UK medication names, British yes. and American different. Yes. So imagine you who have been a nurse 20 years in Nigeria somewhere, coming to America and uh, because the money is enticing, you jump and start traveling, you will come home depressed, you'll be frustrated, hmm. you'll become topic of the day. My fellow Oibo, they will chew you with gossip. They will finish you with gossip. Yes. <laughs> so polish your skills before you start traveling. If not, money is good. We all love money, the good stuff of life, the good things of life, but you'll mm. come home depressed. Mm. Wow. Yes. The American patients is very, very enlightened. They know they are right. Mm. The American patients know they are right. The American patient has averagely about 30 diagnoses. He's been working with since he was born. Hmm. But he's going to push your buttons and ask you questions to make sure you know what you're doing. Number one, just because you, you look different and also you sound different. Hmm. So you walk in the room, he does not have trust in you. In the no, you have to prove yourself. You have to prove yourself. Some of us are so small, little... And he's like, are you sure? How old are you? Are you 18? No, I'm not. I can't remember the last time I was 18. I've been a nurse for 12 years. So imagine. So you're putting your name on the board. 
I'm Priscilla, I'm going to be on Earth today. And they start acting funny and start asking certain questions. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen TikTok videos about how... <laughs> yeah, so you need to know your stuff. You need to prove mm -hmm. yourself before they would have the trust in you. Mm -hmm. He's been taking these medications for 30, 30 years, but he's still going to ask you, what's the blue one and what is it for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is just an idea of how it is. So imagine you drive into an unknown environment. You don't know your, the staff. You don't know anybody there. And a patient pushes your button and you need someone to talk to or you need someone to clarify something to. You're not coming to me because I'm going to be hostile to you. You make four or five times my salary. Why am I teaching you what a yellow medication is for? I'm not going to teach you that. <laughs> so basically, um, a travel nurse can earn about... <laughs> $20,000 a month. <laughs> wow. And I, at the end of the whole year, yeah. I, I make about $76,000 a year and it's small. But if I'm telling I'm telling my fellow UK nurses it's small, they want to beat me up. <laughs> that's, that's like, <laughs> that's like a double or triple what we earn in the UK. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Yes. So wow. basically where you live, cost of living will determine how much you are paid. If you are young, free, our advice is to stay in the big cities, make that money so that when it's time to settle down and start having kids yes. and all, you have saved enough. But if you have, you're pregnant and you still have two toddlers, are you going to be traveling all around? No, it's doable. People are doing it. But weigh your options. Build your skills first. If you look like me or sound like me, build your skills before you go there. Mm. They will use gossip to finish you. Trust uh -huh. me. <laughs> wow. That's very thorough. Like, that's detailed. There's nobody that will say they don't know about... Uh, like, some of us have been researching, and, yeah, I, I can totally relate to most of the things you've said. So just um, in summary, how is life? How have you found life in the U.S. generally when it comes to racism, weather, um, living, just everything? How do you see it? Okay. So life in U.S., Life anywhere is not easy, especially when you don't come from there. You, didn't, you were not born there, you didn't grow up there. So everything will be different to you. Everything, you have to relearn everything from scratch. As little as flushing the toilet. You go to some toilet and there's nowhere to flush. It's just maybe touch, sensor. <laughs> sensor, motion. <laughs> so I'm standing there, I don't know what to do. And so I move away and I hear some noise. I look but the thing is gone. It's flat. <laughs> Yeah. So you have to relearn, learn and relearn a lot of things. You have to dump some characters. Back home in Africa, you are the nurse and you are the boss and you are screaming on the patient. Sit down. You won't go. I won't do <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so you need to learn and relearn a lot of things. You need to leave some old characters behind. You need to cite yourself. You need to research about the country you're going to. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Start from today, start watching the YouTube video of people who live in the country that you are going to. It would guide you. Watch people who do uh, daily vlogs, going shopping, how to get a uh, driver's license. Mm -hmm. Watch mm -hmm. those things. It will really, really inform you before you get there. Mm -hmm. And research on the weather. If you are like me, you don't like cold. You are coming to New York State where it snows every day. It will take me <laughs> lesser hours to get to Canada behind my backyard here than to go to New York City. So imagine the Canada weather coming to my house. So get ready for weather changes. If you go to a state, it doesn't snow in every state. So research the weather in those states and buy the appropriate clothing for the first few days that you're going to come in. If you're coming in February and you're coming to New York, you should be having winter boots and winter jackets. So read those basic things to adjust to life. So life in general has been good. The first three years of my life has been very, very stressful. Uh, trying to readjust to everything. I had to readjust to uh, working in the a new environment, the working system. I was now working as a CNA, as I said. I had to readjust to marriage because my marriage has always been distance. So I had to readjust to that, which was very hard living together. I had to readjust to the weather and the fact that you are detached from your loved ones, your family, your parents, everybody's back home. It's really hard. So the first few years was hard for me. If you can see my videos, I was always very stressed. I'm always very stressed. Right now, I'm even stressed. But uh, with time, you adjust and your body begins to adjust to the environment. So life has been good. If I have to do it again, I would definitely do it again. Mm -hmm. Especially now that back home is extremely hard. 
if you want to do something, do it now. Don't waste your time. Start the application mm -hmm. now. If nothing at all, for the sake of your children, it will be worth it. You can, someone will say, the certainty of the future of your kids, you will have it here. You know that when my child goes to school, they'll find something to do. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, when your child goes to school, have PhD, will they have something to do? Parents mm -hmm. here can say, my child is going to work in this company, and that child ends up working in that company. Mm -hmm. But we in Africa, we cannot say our child is going to go to work in this company. Mm -hmm. You are not assured. You're, it's not certain mm -hmm. that you get that job. So if you want to embark on this journey, this is the time to do it. It might be lengthy and all, but we've done it. Mm -hmm. You are not the first person. Some of us have been bounced in America. We denied a lot of American visa three times before I finally showed up here, even with my legitimate course and every detail and evidence to prove. So don't get discouraged. Life here is not rosy. Not at all. All you're going to do is work, work, work. You don't have a social life. You have to make your own home a happy place. You have to generate your own happiness. Life abroad is not easy, but we are not saying this to discourage you. She's doing it in UK. I'm doing it in US. People are doing it all over the world. And yeah. you would be fine. You would adjust. You'll find a way to survive. We are born to be survivors. And I would discourage anybody who, who gets a chance to travel abroad. Take it. Take it. Mm -hmm. This is not brain drain, but take it. Your home will always be there. We can always pack and go home anytime we want to go home. But this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and you should take it. Wow. Thank you so much. I know... Um, my last two last questions because it just came to I wrote it down as well. Do you have to have diploma or BSc? Because in the UK you can have either or, and you're going to be able to register as a registered nurse. Does it affect your registration? And the second question is: Do they acknowledge your years of experience? You said you're 12 years. You've been a nurse for 12 years. I've been a nurse for 12 years as well. But when I came to the UK, I started like. I'm, I'm on the same band as somebody that left nursing last month. You, the UK will not acknowledge how many years of experience you've had. You're starting from band five, zero, or four and a half before you get your... You're starting from band four before you get your PIN, before you get your registration, and then you start from band five, and you're going to be like the lowest that you walk your way up. So how is it for the US? Just quickly, please. Okay. Thank you for those questions. Uh, which one should I... Let me add, 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 address the one with the band first. So as I said, in US, you, you have a bargaining power. Okay. I applied to two jobs. The first one said, no, we can't. We only will take you as a new grad. Okay. The second one said, no, experience is experience, no matter where you've had it. So they placed me on RN2. The first one, I did everything. They will not place me on RN2. Okay. So that is when you need to know that in America, you have a right. And you can bargain for whatever. So I said two nurses hired the same, they will not be earning the same pay. Mm -hmm. You went and bargained $20 an hour. I went and bargained $40 an hour. Mm -hmm. And I gave them reasons to, and they gave it to me. Wow. Yes. So they consider your years of experience and okay. you should bargain that. And the only way you can bargain that if you did everything on your own and passed your own NCREX, then the recruiters come. Then you now look on all the documents in the contracts. This one says 20, this one says 25, this one says free accommodation for three months plus $20 bonus, 20,000, whatever. Then you will now take the one that favors you. Mm -hmm. So you have the chance to begin. Your experience counts. So you can use your diploma or you can use your bachelor's degree. Okay. Those are the requirements. America is trying to phase out the diploma. They're trying to get rid of the diploma. So diploma nursing in America is called associate nursing. Okay. So if someone says I'm an associate nurse, they have the diploma. There are two types of RNs. An RN, who is an associate RN and an RN RN. I am an RN RN because I have I have a four years bachelor's degree from University of Ghana. So okay. I'm an RN RN. There's an associate RN, and that is a diploma RN. So you okay. coming with your three-year diploma from Africa, you are an associate RN. And they are trying to phase out that associate. So as soon as they give you the job, they give you, I think, 18 months to quickly, a year to 18 months to quickly get a top up, a bridge program, an accelerated something to just get your BSN. They okay. always advocate for BSN, but okay. diploma is accepted, bachelor's is accepted. They look at year experience, they used to say two years experience, but as I said now, the agencies are desperate, the shortage, the hospitals need you, so they've lowered it to one year, some have even lowered it to six months. And recently, Evans went to uh, a, um, Dubai, and they were even saying no 
experience needed. So yes. So those are the requirements. Prove that you are a registered nurse, have the certificates or documents to show that you're a registered nurse, have um, one to two years experience, have your bachelor's, have your BSN. People always ask, I've gone, I did my diploma here and I went to this university to do my BSN and which one should I use? You can evaluate both of them, but just know that it's gonna cost you more and it's gonna be more stressful because you have to now go to two different nursing schools because in Ghana, you can just do one diploma and now go to college, university to get your degree. You're now gonna go to those two nursing schools and now put those documents together, pay, because they're all not gonna do it for free and now mail them back. If this school sends their own and that school doesn't send their own until all of them arrive, CGFNS cannot work on your documents. So you can add them, you can evaluate all of them. It will take you longer. It will be more stressful going around for those documents and it will cost you more, but it's worth it. But you can just evaluate your diploma. The only time you need to prove to the person that, oh, I have a degree, I'm a bachelor's owner, um, earner, is when it comes to finding a job. job okay. The evaluation has nothing to do with a job. You're okay. now going to present your BSN that I have a bachelor's degree, I didn't evaluate it or whatever, but this is it, and then they'll place you where you belong okay all oh, right that is thank you so much i totally understand now um anything else to say that we've missed anything you want to say so once again all i will say is that if you get this chance take the opportunity start the process now whether you do it or not the time is going to elapse and you're going to regret my friend will say you'll be talking in the past tense oh when mm -hmm. priscilla was going I was doing a process and I stopped. Mm. Don't be that person. Mm. And I know most of them will come under this comment section and ask about, what about CNA? If you're an RN and you get a nursing assistant job offer, take it. Yeah. But make sure you start your endless journey, process, paperwork, before you leave your home country. Okay. You do not want to stay in that CNA job role for four years, five years. My mm. very good friend has been in America for 10 years and she still hasn't achieved her RN dream. Hmm. we will see and it's together so start the RN journey first I always tell people in my telegram group stop that RN journey because it's not like the CNA journey is even going to be expedited the earliest hmm. we can take you to get into America won't be less than 18 months even for CNA oh. so you might as well start your paperwork the small small steps you can be doing evaluating your documents so that as soon as you come as a CNA two three weeks then like two three months you are making a step, then you get to write your own class, then you stay with, because the agency brought you, you're still going to stay with them, but they will change your position or your role as an RN. Okay. They brought you as a CNA, but the same hospitals need nurses, so they will just move you from CNA role and put you as a nurse for that same facility until you serve your hours. So take any of those travel opportunities. Read the contracts well. Know what you are signing. I know people who are stuck with agencies and they come back out. Hmm. they are in bondage read well before you sign don't be desperate hmm. signing any type of contract that is my advice to them wow <laughs> thank you so much thank you for everything you've told us and please everybody that is watching remember she's going youtube channel i'm going to leave her link and that's the name of her channel as well priscilla kuma rn on her screen that's the name of our YouTube channel. Please remember to go to her channel, subscribe, and you know the code. Say, Gloria sent me. And if you have the US dream, even me, I've, I'm researching US, I'm researching Canada, I'm researching Australia. I research all the time, you see, because you don't, you can never have enough. Mm -hmm. Get the information, and I'm sure you're not going to regret. Thank you, Priscilla, for coming. We will also go to her channel to go and record her video so you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, click on the notification bell, and we'll see you in another video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>